In today's video, we're going to be reacting to some TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Project Bluebeam. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what that is? It's the ability to stage through very advanced technologies an alien attack or an alien event. And it's a whole series of them. Now, what most people don't know about since 19 late 50s, early 60s, like the Barney Hill case and all that, um, those were all human assets abducting innocent people made to look alien. And so that psychological warfare op began with authorized in, the, in 1953, 54. 1954, we mastered gravity control. So we started deploying these assets to begin to condition the public that there's a th scary threat from outer space. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Hollywood, Alien, you know, Ridley Scott's the, the movies. Uh, if you want to see a script for what's coming fairly soon, look at the movie Independence Day. Okay. It's right out of central casting for this covert group. Uh, so what their, their whole purpose is to create sort of a global militarized totalitarian super state of the world fighting another world. It's like War of the Worlds. Okay. And that's been a 70 year defense. I definitely believe that Project Blue Beam is starting to become more and more of a real thing. It seems to be that we're getting more evidence from governmental agencies now that aliens are possibly out there. So it wouldn't surprise me if they just start showing us UFOs or UAPs, things like that, to get us a little bit more numbed to it. Something's telling me in 2024 we're going to be seeing a lot more UFO sightings. I'm sorry, NASA just found what? Yeah, 2024 just gets even crazier. I'm flipping two days in. It's not even started. It's not even started yet. So this giant planet right here, I'm sure you all know Jupiter, right? Now, if you didn't know, Jupiter is the largest planet by a long way in our solar system. It is absolutely flipping huge. In fact, it is actually 11 times the size of our planet, so pretty big. But also, Jupiter has over 95 moons. Is one not enough? Now, one of these moons is called Europa, and NASA suspects there is life on Europa. What? They are so sure that there is life on this planet that they are now rushing to build a new satellite and device to go and investigate this planet immediately. They've literally got on their website saying in 2024 the journey begins. This thing called Clipper is being created basically to decipher if this planet is actually habitable for us. No thanks mate. Now this is what Europa's surface looks like. I mean literally something straight out of Halo. It's got a big ocean. A big ocean. The water underneath has more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. But you're probably wondering why do they think there's life there? It's just a flipping moon. Well, recently carbon dioxide, yes, carbon dioxide, was detected to be emitted from the ocean under the surface of this planet. And this, of course, is considered a hallmark of life. They said the presence of specific chemical compounds and the temperature of this planet basically make for perfect habitable conditions. Now, the oceans here are believed to be over 4 billion years old, which is, of course, more than enough time for life to form and evolve on this planet. Now I'm not saying there's going to be some giant green-headed alien just running around the planet, but there is a very good chance that there is some form of sea life or more on this planet. Now of course with all of this happening this year this story is going to develop a lot. That's really cool and it's neat that we're sending a satellite out there to view it a little bit better. I kind of wish we would have done that with more satellites with all the planets. We just I mean, we're already spending enough money in these funds, so why not just have a satellite for each planet at this point? We could have been sending them out a couple of decades ago. Take a look at this brand new footage coming out of Miami, Florida regarding the Bayside Market alien incident. This witness captures those three beans on film. I have enhanced the video as much as I possibly could, as well as slowed it down at the end, so you can see these creatures were massive dark, shadowy, and they do look humanoid. Tell me what you think. Bro, bro, bro. Everyone's going this way. Yo. Yo, what is that?
I know that the Bayside market in Miami had that incident go down. I do not believe this is real footage of that incident. I have more saved here that we'll run across here in a little bit. But this is crazy. And uh, I mean, basically the comments sum it up pretty well. It's like you walk around with a $1,500 phone with no clear footage. But I've seen people with their phones and a lot of people's phones are all busted up and cracked and everything so it wouldn't surprise me but it's just crazy that we haven't actually had any clear footage yet i'm sure people are dealing with shock and everything like that with this uh, with this happening so in time we'll probably see some uploads but it's going to be to the point where we're not going to know if it's real or fake hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i make videos like this almost every day so everyone's heard that Nikola Tesla quote that says if you only knew the power of 3, 6, and 9, then you would hold the key to the universe. But no one actually tells you what the actual power of 3, 6, and 9 is. So I'm going to tell you in this video. So now I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. This is going to be a little bit lengthy, but stick with me. First, if you haven't already heard of the Fibonacci sequence, you should go ahead and look up what the Fibonacci sequence is. The Fibonacci sequence is something that appears within many forms of life within our existence within our universe. Now I'm going to read this passage out of this book. It's called Project 369. So it says, no matter where you are in the universe, it is safe to say that 1 plus 2 equals 3. The power of the two binary systems is essential in the understanding of the universal order. It works by doubling numbers starting from 1. This pattern is applicable in all places, but more importantly, in the biological development of cells and embryos contained within all living things, including ourselves. You should also know what a digital root is. You get a digital root by adding all of the single digits of a number one by one until you get a final sum that equals a single digit. So for example, our cells are multiplied from one to two, then four to eight, and 8 to 16. The digital root of 16 is 7 because 1 plus 6 equals 7. Keep the sequence going and you'll get 32, 64, 128, and so on. The digital root of 32 is 5. 3 plus 2 equals 5. The digital root of 64 is 10. 6 plus 4 equals 10. And the digital root of 128 is 2. 1 plus 2 plus 8 equals 11. 1 plus 1 equals 2. So now I know at this point you're probably wondering, well, none of those numbers are 3, 6, and 9, right? But just wait, watch how juicy this gets. So it goes on to say, if you observe the entire sequence of cells duplicating from 1, it will give you a pattern such as 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. And the mystery of it all is that if you continue this process, you will never find the numbers 3, 6, or 9 in this entire sequence. Now, if all the cells, like we had stated, that created all of the life forms on this planet started from one and three six and nine do not exist within the development of these cells it must only mean that three six and nine are numbers that exist only in the non-physical realm it must only mean that three six and nine are numbers that exist solely within our imagination representing the formless energy consciousness and light while the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, and 5 represent the outer world, the form, and the manifestation. So using the numbers 3, 6, and 9 to connect with the imagination, with the inner world, with the higher consciousness, these higher realms, to bring our manifestations into these external reality, which is represented by the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Use the numbers 3, 6, and 9 to bring our manifestations into existence. So now this book, it's called Project 369. Uh, this theory comes from Nikola Tesla when he talked about the numbers 369. And this book dives into consciousness, manifestation, numerology. It was way deeper into explaining what I just did in this video. And I went ahead, I tagged this book down here for you guys on this video. All you gotta do is click that button, that orange button on the TikTok shop. It'll take you to the TikTok shop. And then you can get yourself the Project 369 book if you are interested in manifesting your dream reality, the front half of this is a book, the back half is a journal, a guided journal, where they actually show you how to use the numbers 3, 6, and 9 to manifest your reality. I remember hearing about Nikola Tesla saying that 3, 6, 9 was the divine number or something like that. 
That's interesting. If you're interested in the 369 project, I put the link in the description down below. Go ahead and check it out. I also have another theory that's really popping. Yeah. Do you know who Garth Brooks is? The country artist. Yeah, yeah. One of the most famous country singers. So there's a theory going around that he's actually a serial killer on some Bob Bra shit. What the fuck? Yeah. Wait, how? So they took his tours, right? Yeah. Coincidentally, every time Garth Brooks goes on these big American tours in those cities, those local towns, every time he plays there, a murder happens the same night. What Garth type of, Brooks what type plays. of murder? Like murder fam. Like what else could there be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mean? And it was crazy because at one of his concert there was a there's a video there's a sign that somebody put up and it was like we love you Garth right mm -hmm. and then right after he pulls away the sign and there's another sign underneath it and it says where are the bodies G right away the cameraman notices it and what flips back fuck? to Garth man. And it gets deeper because on an interview, yeah. he's talking about like how he would be a bad guy and he would rather kill somebody. He wouldn't want to be the he good guy. Hear, hear what he says. Oh, you don't want to be a bad no. guy, no. I mean, no. you look like a good guy, you know? Okay, I guess. I'd, I'd rather kill somebody. Oh, you're right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, are they investigating yet? I'm not gonna lie. Garth Brooks has some serial killer looking vibes there, but... For it to be real, I don't know. How, how does someone have enough time to do that on tour? That's kind of crazy. But again, how do you just murder someone? That's interesting. Whoa. That's... <laughs> I've seen this before. I don't know, I feel like that's from a movie or something. That was, uh, didn't look quite real. Sound effects didn't sound quite real. The reaction didn't seem quite right. I don't know if this is a real thing or not. Let me know what you guys think. We would keep their presence on Earth a secret. They would furnish us with advanced technology and would help us in our technological development. They would not make any treaty with any other Earth nation. They could abduct humans on a limited and periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and monitoring of our development with the stipulation that the humans would not be harmed, would be returned to their point of abduction, that the humans would have no memory of the event, and that the alien nation would furnish MJ-12 with a list of all human contacts and abductees on a regularly scheduled basis. And this is not being done. It was agreed that each nation would receive the ambassador of the other for as long as the treaty remained in force. It was further agreed that the alien nation in the United States would exchange 16 personnel each to the other with the purpose of learning each of the other. The alien guests would remain on Earth and the human guests would travel to the alien point of origin for a specified period of time, then return, at which point a reverse exchange would be made. I have no knowledge whatsoever of what happened to those original 16 humans who left the Earth with the aliens. It was also agreed that bases would be constructed underground for the use of the alien nation and the two bases would be constructed for the joint use of the alien nation and the United States government. The base at Dulce is one, the base at S-4 in the area known as Area 51 or Dreamland is the second. Exchange of technology would take place in the jointly occupied bases. These alien bases would be constructed under Indian reservations in the four corners of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, and one would be constructed in Nevada in the area known as S-4, located approximately seven miles south of the western border of Area 51, otherwise known as Dreamland. All alien areas are under complete control of the Naval Department, and all personnel who work in these complexes receive their checks from the Navy. Construction of the bases began immediately, but progress was slow until large amounts of money were made available in 1957, and in the meantime, work continued on the Yellow Book with the 
information derived from the guests. I would like to say at this time that the movie that most of you may have seen, how many of you saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind? That movie was absolutely true. Those events did take place. Not exactly as you saw them. Not in the place where you saw them take place. But there was a landing. There was an agreement. There was conversation. There was an exchange of personnel made. I would like to say now also that J. Allen Hynek was the technical director on that movie, and he was also the co-author of Grudge 13, which I read between the years 1970 and 1973, along with another man named Lieutenant Colonel Friend. It's interesting to think that there might be two alien bases. I would have figured that there's probably more, and there probably is. It's not been actually mentioned if this is real, but this is interesting. Oh, my God. There's, there's two. Oh, I got one. I... I would be reacting way more hyped than that if I got a UFO that close. Looks like a real video, but I'm pretty sure it's fake or something's not quite right with it. The reaction I, honestly seems kind of genuine. It seems so shocked that you just don't know how to, to handle it. But, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that real or fake? Some of those, especially the last one, definitely look like a drone. Now the one where he's in a plane and he sees that uh, where he sees that cigar-shaped one, that one is pretty convincing. I would actually have some questions on that. Let's look at the photo. You say that's me? Okay. Check out the name badge. It says Aldrin. Looks like you're right. But notice the helmet. Can you see my face? No. This is a secret I've been keeping for almost half a century. <laughs> On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and I pulled off humanity's first extraterrestrial prank. Uh, what was the scariest moment of the journey? Scariest? It didn't happen. It could have been scary. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. Money is a good thing. If you want to buy new things, new rockets, instead of keep doing the same thing over, well, then it's going to cost more money. And other things need more money too. So having achieved what president wanted us to do and then what thousands millions of people in America and millions of people around the world you know when we toured around the world after we came back the most fascinating observation as we was signs that said we did it. Not just us, not just America, but we, the world, different country. They felt like they were part of what we were able to do. And that made us feel very good. Mm. So, is this real? I see some of these Buzz Aldrin videos circulating on TikTok, 
and I've done some side research on Google and every time that I search up Buzz Aldrin confessing the moon landing was fake or space is fake, nothing comes up. Everything says that those are all hoaxes. So I'm not sure. This is, if this was a stitched together video to make it sound like he was telling people that the thing was fake, then it was a very well done video, but there's a lot of them online like that. So I would like to know a little bit more if this is real or is it just a thing people are doing online to make it sound like he's saying it was fake? Because honestly, I mean, it, the, the video seemed like it, it, the guy saying that it was fake, then it was fake, right? Like if the guy that did it says it's fake, then it's got to be fake. So, hey Yaz, what does it look like? Like it. Actually, I don't know. God, I can't even see it. What the hell is wrong with No, it's, it's straight up and down. No, no, it has something on the side, Robert. We gotta get a picture. Oh, yeah? Uh oh, Iron Man, sorry. What is that? Super Oh, Might be the super people Malbecian. It's holding its position yeah. straight up and down. It's one straight up and down and it's staying that way. You see it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know when you see the guys see them. It's like a. This looks like a person with his arm sticking out. The footage of all three of them at the same time. How you can see the the separation of every part of the body. It's just such 3D structure. And you can see right there, Jaws' footage was captured at 60 zoom, Jonathan's was captured at 80 zoom, and Hans's was captured at 220 zoom. Hans captured his with a telescope connected to an SLR uh, Sony camera at 24 megapixels. That's why it looks so clear. Uh, one big thing you see is the structure stood up the whole time, which is only possible if it was sustaining itself. Here is some footage we captured on January 25th. This was uh, the second humanoid we ever caught. doesn't look like much now. But when we looked at the stills, that's when it got into the humanoid kind of structure. So I'll show you guys right now, right after the video. Here you go. Here's a still of it. You can see a head, a shape of an arm kind of popping up, and a Spock sign. That's not it. Here's some other pictures, uh, stills of that same one you guys just saw. The one on the in the right, or the one on the left is the one you guys just saw. The one on the right is another one we captured at Sequoia. But you see the humanoid structure. All right, back to the one we got, we were talking about. Uh, this thing is baffling, guys. So again. Uh, Tell me in the comments what you guys think it is. I, I need some ideas because it, it looks like a humanoid at some points, then it starts rotating. It looks like some other crazy thing that makes no sense at all. And there's this little weird dot that keeps sticking out of the arm. You guys see that? On the top left green one, there's a little orb that's, that keeps popping out of the arm and going away. To me, it looks like a hologram projected into the sky, perhaps. If it is, it's very impressive because it's such a day. It, it's it's so much daylight outside, so it would be really hard to get a a hologram to project. So I'm not sure what this could be, but I definitely believe it is something. Whether it be UFO, UAP, extraterrestrial based, I don't know, but it definitely is something that's unexplained for sure. Y'all do know what this is, right? If you said sewage water that's about to be cleaned to be your tap water, you are 100% correct. Now let's see this lovely process they do to clean this water, so you can later on drink it. It looks like any other tap water. Clear, clean, and fresh. There are some people hesitant to drink this. But what I'm about to sip starts as this. So what you've got is the raw sewage being generated by more than a million people. It's a unique water treatment program being run in Orange County, California. I think people would be surprised at uh, what goes on after they flush the toilet and, and what it takes to make clean water. Normally, processed sewage water is dumped into the ocean, but instead, it's being piped next door. That's really what makes this project stand out, is the technology that we use to turn that water into near distilled water. First, treated sewage water is microfiltered. Those bubbles, leftover soap. Removes any bacteria, protozoa, or suspended solids out of the water. Then, reverse osmosis. It very effectively removes any dissolved minerals, 
viruses or pharmaceuticals that may be in the water. Finally, a quick flash of UV light and it's ready. It's better than the bottled water that we get off the shelf. Every day, 100 million gallons of water is processed this way. The former sewage, a sustainable source of local water, since people aren't going to stop taking showers or flushing the toilet anytime soon. What people don't realize is they've been drinking wastewater their entire life, they just haven't realized it. Has no smell. It tastes like water. It's water. Now, I'm not going to lie, I only drink spring water, but I'm starting to think that spring water ain't really springing for me. Now, we all know that they was cleaning the water so we can utilize it. I'm going to have to... I don't know if I trust bottled water now. I don't know if I trust bottled water now. I'm glad that I have well water because I do not know if I trust. <laughs> I do not know if I trust bottled water, even spring water now. I am definitely glad that I have my own well. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.